Target. $7.99 if you're curious about the earrings I'm wearing in this video. I'm about to pop them in. So cute, so lightweight, and they're nickel free. Good shit. Also, if you hear that little wheezing sound, the licking sound, the eating sound, the drinking sound, it's Wheezy. He's sitting right under the camera today. I woke up at 3.30 in the morning today and I feel freaking fantastic. I did a whole day's work. It's 6.30. I'm motivated to film this video. Maybe this needs to be my new routine. Except I'm probably gonna crash in like an hour. Like hard. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hey guys, what's <laughs> Focus. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Brittany Nicole, and today we are back in studio lighting because we are actually doing a tutorial. Feels like it's been forever, so I thought it was about time. I just watched an Allie Glines video. Every time I watch her videos, I'm inspired to film, so check her out. I will link her down below. She is awesome. She is so motivating. She is so down to earth and I want to be her best friend. But anyway, that motivated me to jump on here and film an actual tutorial in my studio lighting. So if you've been with me for a while, you know I like to film videos in natural light a lot of the time so you guys can see what it actually looks like. But when I am filming a tutorial, I really want to be able to show you guys. And in the natural light, I'm not actually controlling the makeup. So sometimes it gets a little bit dark. So here, when I'm teaching you something, it makes sense to have the studio lighting. So hopefully that makes sense to you. But we are going to do this with all drugstore makeup. I have an entire box here full of some of my drugstore favorites. I also have some new products that I wanted to test out some more, like the new Wet n Wild Dewy Foundation. I mentioned that in one of my natural light videos that we would be using it again and today is the day. I am also using some of the new Milani palettes. I have all of them in front of me. I have six of them actually. So I'm just going to kind of see what happens when we get into the tutorial. So if that sounds like something you're interested in seeing, go ahead and keep watching. All right, you guys, I've already primed the face. Today I use the Milani Soft Focus Glow in Nude Glow. Really like this stuff. I included it in my favorite primers of 2019. I like to let my primers sink in the skin for 10-15 minutes. I highly suggest you guys do the same so they can really do their job before slapping on your foundation. Speaking of foundation, we are going in with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation Dewy. Once again, I did use this in a natural light video, but I do want to show you this in studio light. I've really been liking this a lot. I recommend not going too overboard because you can really kind of load this up and then get a little cakey throughout the day. Any foundation that can get up to full coverage if you load it on the skin can look super heavy and again in the studio lights when you see videos oftentimes it looks a lot softer on camera but once you step outside it can look a hot mess so I'm gonna go in with a decent amount but nothing too overpowering you know I do have to say they really fixed the scent of this foundation I remember thinking that it smelled like paint I think everybody on YouTube said that so Kudos to them for listening to their audience and taking the scent out of this. It still has like a touch of a scent. I don't know what it is. It has some kind of scent to it, but it's not overpowering and it's definitely not paint scented. I'm also trying to use more affordable. I like that I just wiped that on the lips, but you know, this is real life people. I'm trying to use more affordable tools as well. So this is my Shop Miss A AOA Studio Paw Paw Sponge. I just literally ordered 18 more of these, which sounds ridiculous, but I love them so much and they come in a pack of six. So I went ahead and just ordered three packs and I think I will have sponges for the rest of my life now. All right, so that is just one coat of the foundation. Like I said, I didn't go into heavy. I know I look a little bit strange because I don't bring my foundation up under my eyes. I know a lot of people do that. Theo is about to sneeze, but I feel like that just gets way too heavy. So when you see me come on camera looking like this, it's because I have nothing under the eyes and I have foundation all over the rest of the face. So let's fix that with the e.l.f. Hydrating Camel Concealer. I have the shade Light Beige, which is perfect for me. And I'm just really gonna kind of dot that there there and just a touch right there. I mainly focus it where my discoloration is. Again, you might be tempted based on seeing tutorials to really kind of bring this all over your face in a triangle and fill in the triangle and then on your chin and the size of the nose and on your forehead and 
I even get caught up in that web sometimes after watching people do that, but in real life it just looks way too heavy and it gets way too cakey on me. I always kind of keep it natural under the eyes, but when you're going in with a foundation like this that's you know, a medium buildable coverage, you really don't need to add excess concealer anywhere unless, of course, you have a ton of discoloration or some other skin issue going on. But keep in mind, if you have fairly regular skin, using a little bit of product really goes a long way. So I'm just gonna keep this under the eyes for today and I'm gonna go ahead and blend that out. I think I may have even applied a little too much here. So I'm gonna just stamp that right on the chin just to kind of distribute some additional product down there so it's not heavy under my eyes. I've actually realized with this concealer as well through one of my last videos in natural light where I didn't use any powder. I do not need to set this concealer at all, which is absolutely amazing. I am not a fan of powder on my face typically, only in strategic spots when necessary, like my Ilia Soft Focus Setting Powder under the eyes with other concealers works really well, but this completely sets it up. <laughs> had to pick that up before Theo started batting it around like a toy that was my primer but like I was saying with this I don't have to set it at all it self sets itself down and looks beautiful throughout the day all right I'm gonna give that foundation a chance to kind of set itself down before I start going in with bronzer and blush so I'm gonna go ahead and brush my brows up and I'm just gonna go in with my Milani precision brow in and I won't make you sit through this because you guys know exactly how I do my brows Brows. The process is fairly easy. I don't take forever. I just kind of fill in where necessary. I really want to try their brow setter. Again, Allie used that in a video and she said that it kept her brows straight up all day long. That is exactly what the Benefit 24 hour brow set does for me and I haven't found anything comparable except for using like glycerin soap which I don't have any more. I threw mine away because I had it for a while. So I really want to try that. The next time I place an order on Ulta, I'm definitely going to be purchasing that. So if you are in the market for a brow set that really kind of spikes your brows up, check that out. The difference a brow makes is crazy. Oh, it looks so much better than this. Not that I have anything wrong with this. This is absolutely fine. But once I get a brow on, it just really frames the face. That was one thing when I did makeup professionally some people were kind of scared when you said you were going to fill in their brows and I never went into crazy which I know some people can do and it kind of haunts them I don't know when when someone messes up your makeup you usually are kind of scared to let someone else do your makeup but it really does frame the face so you know keep that in mind if you don't fill in your brows okay and then to just set those brows I'm gonna go in with the ColourPop brow boss in light brown this stuff is really good for making your brows look a little bit thicker it will not like hold them up like the benefit which is why I want to try the Milani but it's a really nice kind of brow fiber product all right, so now that the foundation has had a chance to set and settle in, I'm gonna go in and bronze. Today I'm using the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Bronze It in 01, and then I'm going in with my Japanese brush. This is a 716. I get these from TJ Maxx, and they're like seven bucks. They're absolutely amazing. I'm also gonna use another one. This is the 722. Got this at TJ Maxx as well, and I use this to blush. So really nice brushes, they're synthetic. I really kind of have to consciously think about like the faces I make when I film these videos because when I edit I see myself and I'm like you know what I mean and it's not very aesthetically pleasing so I need to do a better job of like remaining cognizant of what my face is doing. <laughs> if that bitch is about to start whistling I swear to god I am going to freak out. And by that bitch I mean my radiator. See how my brows are already kind of falling down after I you know, took my bronzer brush and kind of went like that with the 24 hour brow set, that doesn't happen. So I just, I need to get that Milani stuff and hope and pray it does the same thing. So let's go in and blush. This is the Milani T-Rose and I have re-fallen in love with the Milani powder blush formula. So beautiful. I'm gonna keep this a little bit farther back because like I've been saying in a couple of my videos, 
got some weird discoloration going on here and it's just kind of irritated from I think a wool hat I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that in how many videos but I'm gonna kind of keep my blush application a little bit far farther back today so I don't kind of add redness to where redness is already prevalent not to mention this kind of just gives my face more of a lifted sculpted look and I really like that all right and as for highlight I'm gonna go in with the Revlon skin lights prismatic highlighter I got this a while ago and I used it a few times and then I forgot about it so I want to try it again today I'm using a morphe m510 I don't use a lot of morphe brushes but this is one that I like and I'm just gonna highlight a touch So you can see this this does build up nicely but it doesn't go on like crazy heavy so if you like more of a natural highlight check this out because some highlights like I love the wet and wild highlights I'm here I go building it up to filth but I love the wet and wild highlights but like the moment you touch that to your skin it is intense so this is a little more tame and then you guys know I always take my sponge and I just tap right over it to kind of just mesh it with the skin and it just tones it down a lot and looks a lot more flattering. One thing I really appreciate about the natural light is you can really see where the light reflects from your face and you can highlight there. When you're in studio lighting like this, it kind of bounces light everywhere since I'm surrounded by light. So I like when I have the natural light because it's really truly showing me where I should highlight. Whereas here, I kind of have to remember what looks best. I don't even know if that actually makes sense, but hopefully it does. <laughs> All right, and you guys know the drill here. Once I'm done with my base makeup, I always just do a couple of spritzes of setting powder just to kind of mesh everything together. I didn't apply a lot of powders, but obviously I used a powder blush and a powder bronzer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spray my face a couple of times with the NYX, bear with me. I am almost out of this. I love this so much. This will definitely be a repurchase. All right, so let's go ahead and work on these eyes. I am gonna try something different today. I'm gonna go in with the Milani eyeshadow primer and see how this works for me today. I don't typically use eyeshadow primers. I usually just take a little bit of my concealer when I'm going in and blending under the eyes and just kind of like wipe it over the eyes to kind of get rid of any discoloration. But I know a lot of people love eyeshadow primers. Unfortunately, paint pots just don't personally work on me. I think you guys saw that from one of my recent videos. Ew, let me wipe off this foundation from my lips in a second here, but I just wanna see how this does. I remember really, really liking this. I also really like the Anastasia, but again, we are keeping it drugstore today. Do you guys think foundation lips are as gross as I do? I just think they look so crusty when editing. I can't. This, by the way, is from Trader Joe's. It is... I don't know, it's like peppermint and I love it. And it has SPF 15, which is really nice. So back to the eyes. So I think we're okay with the primer there. So I'm gonna go in with the Milani Luster Light Palette here. This is really pretty, very typical, you know, color scheme that I would go for. I'm gonna keep it really light. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with a little bit of eat cake and I'm gonna kind of run that through the crease and for this I'm using the wet n wild p20 one of my absolute favorite fluffy brushes ever and just in case you guys haven't seen any of my other videos I take a mirror this palette does come with a mirror I hold it down and then I look down and I see where I'm naturally a little bit darker and where my orbital bone sinks in so you can do that by pushing into kind of your socket and feeling where it naturally kind of recedes I know where mine recedes because I do my makeup so often, but that's just a little bit of a tip and I can also see a little bit of darkness. You can't quite see it on camera, but I know exactly where to place my color based off that. And I'm using a very light hand. Hold further down on your brush so your brush is a little more wiggly if you want a lighter application and if you really wanna go in intensely, which I don't know when you'd wanna do that right off the bat, you would hold your brush closer to the brush hairs. And I normally would hold my brush out like this when I apply that way. I'm not accidentally getting 
pigment on my lid a lot of times people will apply eyeshadow like this and then it transfers down onto their lid it's not a big deal here because i'm not entirely sure what i'm gonna do yet and i'll probably only apply a darker color on there but if you wanted you know a lighter color on the lid you'd want to hold your brush out like this so you're really strategically applying the color it's very easy to do this and i have to do it when i'm showing you this video otherwise you're not going to see what i'm doing but typically if i'm not filming i'm holding my brush out like this to apply that color and i'm thinking i'm gonna do kind of like a halo eye situation because it's been quite a while since i've done anything like that but We'll see once we get this crease color on. And I'm taking that right into the center here where my nose naturally kind of starts to turn down. I find that that makes my eyes look a little bit bigger and it makes me look like I have more eyelid space than I actually do. If you were struggling as well with, you know, finding your crease area, you can look forward, hold a mirror in front of you and just apply above where your eye naturally creases kind of where the fold is because you want to be able to see that color a little bit but I don't like to be able to see it like too much where it looks like you've stamped color so I really apply super lightly and I make sure to blend it really really well and then I just kind of stop right where my lower lash line would continue up so it doesn't bring my eye down all right I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to this real techniques base shadow brush with that same color eat cake this is kind of flat but also works to blend I just want to be able to get in the inner corner here and with the p20 it's a little more difficult this just kind of allows me to hit that area all right so I'm just taking a wet and wild pencil brush I got this in a set from Walgreens a while back and I'm still using the same shade eat cake and I'm just deepening the outer corner and inner corner a little bit to start to kind of give me that halo look. This is just a bit smaller than the P20 so I can really get in those areas where I need to. I'm also going to take that same shade, same brush, look up and apply it under the eye. Alright, and just to keep things like super, super simple, I think I'm just going to take Glow Getter from the palette which is just kind of a pinky reflective shade and I'm going to take that on my finger and I'm just going to apply that where I basically haven't applied any shadow so right in the center here and I'm just going to kind of work that right into the eat cake shade and just make it look really nice and blended I'm going to take it up kind of high as well I'm just kind of going for like a really pretty pinky all over the lid look if that makes sense yeah that's super pretty really fresh that'll look really really pretty for like springtime so pretty i really like how that kind of has like a yellow gold reflect to it so pretty so i'm just gonna go in with the same p20 brush i'm wiping off any excess on a towel and i'm just gonna make sure everything looks nice and blended we're not going for a stark look today like i said i just kind of want an all over wash of color that was the easiest ever. I'm jumping back into the highlight now and I'm going to pop that on the inner corner. This is a Shop Miss A Studio, no, AOA Studio E134 brush. I always mispronounce that name, but I get, I got this on the same site. I got my sponge. These were like 10 bucks for a nice little set. Really, really like how small this is. And I'm really going to kind of build up the inner corner highlight here. I am so obsessed with this. I think this is so fresh, so pretty. I am in love with it. I hope you guys love this as much as I do because I'm really excited right now. So I'm going to jump into the Milani Gilded Nude Palette and I'm going to go into this shade right here which is called Ann Chill. And I'm going to grab my Sigma E06 Wing Liner Brush. I know Sigma isn't technically a dr drugstore brand or anything like that, but this is the tiniest brush and works really, really well on my hooded eyes. And I really just want a kind of tight line to add a little bit of definition at the lash line. 
mine and this is the only brush that I trust to do that. Definitely feel free to use whatever brush you have here, but I do have a code with Sigma. It is an affiliate link, so feel free to not use that code, but it will get you some money off. It's just Brittany Nicole, I think. I'll leave it down below for you guys. And we are not going in and trying to like do a winged liner or anything. I'm really just adding definition right at the base and I think this brown is going to be so flattering. Alright, so you can see here the difference adding the brown. This one obviously has nothing. It just kind of gives the appearance of a thicker lash line, which I really like. Alright, and then I'm just going to line the upper waterline. I'm debating doing the lower waterline as well, but I'm not sure if I want to do that, so I'm just going to start with the upper waterline with the LA Girl Brown Glide On Gel Liner. I really like these. And then I'm going to curl my lashes and go in with my Maybelline Snapscara. I don't think I need lashes for this look. This is a very natural look. So I'm going to go in with the brown black. Loved the color of the ColourPop best friend mascara or whatever it's called that was like the prettiest brown on my lashes but it just made my lashes look too heavy where this makes it look lengthened but it kind of looks just like a black like a softer black but I think that'll complement this look really well so I'm gonna do all that and then I'll come right back here yo look how freaking good this mascara looks yes Maybelline all right, you guys, mascara is on, and this is the completed look. I obviously decided to just whack on my lip because you all know how to apply a lip. So I went in with the LA Girl Sugar and Spice Lip Liner. I love this. Apparently, I'm the Hulk because I went to put on the cap, and I somehow sliced this. So didn't know I was that strong. And then, of course, I went in with my Believe Beauty Satin Crush Lipstick in Soft Rose. No shocker here. Are you guys sick of me using these? I just love this formula so much, and this color is beautiful. And then I topped it off with the L'Oreal See You Soon Glowing Lip Gloss. These are from Walmart, and these are my absolute favorite glosses. I know I use these all the time, but you know, your girl likes what your girl likes. So that is it for this one. I think the brown mascara really complements this look. It looks really soft, but put together, my skin still looks like skin. You can see how pretty that wet and wild foundation is. It just looks natural. I like that you can still see a little bit of the imperfections because I don't want to look airbrushed all the time. There's a time and a place for that. When you're doing a toned down makeup look like this, I think fresh, glowy, natural skin kind of looks best. So I hope you found this video helpful and somewhat educational. If you guys have any questions, as always, please let me know down below. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing any more videos from me, please subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. And definitely make sure to follow me on Instagram as well. You will see all of my animals on Instagram. They are all over my stories. But I do keep my Instagram feed makeup related. And I will always let you know on Instagram when I post a new video. Because sometimes YouTube lets you know and sometimes it doesn't. So thanks again for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.